Don't mind me while I smash a strawberry. Um, what's going on, everyone? I'm good at strawberries. I found a new love for these recently. Delicious. Give me a thumbs up for one of these. Um, look, just here in the office, impromptu Q and A. If uh, you got a question about dancing, a question about what you're doing, your goals, where you're going, leave it below now and uh, let me help you out somehow. I will give you some insights or some sort of advice or direction. And I would love to talk to you about that. <clears throat> and I might even bring you on the show. So I'll leave a link in the window for you to join me because that could be fun. Who knows how that could work out, but I need you to contribute. So put in a question, let's get this underway. I'll leave some music up in a second for it to roll. And uh, if there's no one out there, cause this is a bit spur of the moment, drop of a hat, um, that's cool too. You know, sometimes I don't catch people at the right time. Let me find this link. I'll get some music in the background, just playing. Let's go, uh, let's go with this. A little bit of music, get your questions. Cool, cool, cool. So I've just put a link in the window. Uh, did I? No, I'm just about to put a link in the chat window. If anyone wants to actually join me live, get your video out. Well, your camera anyway. And so good audio is always helpful. Let me just copy this link. I'll put it up in here for you. And if anyone wants to join me in the next, like say 10 minutes, you can come on live on the show. We'll have a chat, throw down some stories, ask a question. That'd be pretty sick. And uh, let's see what happens. In the meantime, if anyone's doing any competitions, struggling with their dancing, let me know. I have some ideas about what I can talk about. Here we go. Hey, 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 what's up, Heather? Nice to hear from you. Right, right, right. Okay. Oh, well, let me just get rid of this. My daughter's just started junior division. What are your thoughts on tanning for young juniors? Uh, so junior, well, I mean, what? how old is she? So... Yeah, tanning, tanning's an interesting one, yeah? Because like, why do people tan to begin with? So first of all, we have like role, rules and regulations in Australia where um, no tanning, I think it's under the age of 14, but it's in the junior, I'm pretty sure it's the junior division. Once you get to youth, I think you can tan. So essentially you can't, yeah, 12, 20, 13. But personally, I don't think it's like necessary. You know, that's why juniors generally wear socks with shoes. Each country is a bit different, but fundamentally my personal opinion uh, I don't think it's necessary because generally you tan to, I don't know, you tan to make yourself look sexy. Let's just be honest. So <clears throat> it, it def look, the thing is though, it's really strange because like how much tan, right? Like how sexually suggestive are you trying to make your daughter? Because that's what you have to be careful of with performance, right? Like at what line, I'm, I copped a lot of shit once because I, I, there was a Netflix show that came out with these and the, the cover were these girls in like little hot shorts and they were, they were twerking. And I was like, what the f no like that's not okay you know, like eight-year-olds should not be in hot shorts twerking i think that's a line not to cross you know and uh freedom of speech is fine but they're forgetting about the predators in the world so we, we don't want to go down that road so i guess i guess my my uh my my thing is with training is you just got to be really mindful and just think like how provocative uh do you want to make your daughter and then <clears throat> 
you also have to realize that when it comes to performance, tanning serves a purpose under lights, right? So that's that's the other flip side of it. So I guess the out, if it's allowed, then that's one thing. And then if it's like how much, and then what is she wearing too? So that's also part of it as well. So anyways, uh, I'm not sure if that helps you at all, but that's just my personal thoughts uh, and things like that. And I'm sure there's a lot of woke people out there that'll be like, ah, oh, no, they should be able to wear what they want, to tan as they want and uh, all that sort of thing. But yeah, they're missing a lot of things in uh, <laughs> about the uh, the dark side of humanity that they're not factoring in there. So anyways, look, um, cool. Right now, if anyone wants to join me in the chat window, let's rock it out, let's rock it out. I didn't really come on line today with a particular subject in mind, but there was something I wanted to talk to people about who are committed in the sense of dancing. So I guess I'll start there. Uh, it, this can definitely translate to like anything else, yeah? So you have ease. So many people are into doing what's easy and... I understand that, but I think that's just one of the fundamentals of life. Most people are trying to do what is easy. And in I think one of the things that attracts people to dancing is that it looks easy, right? It looks simple. And even tonight when I was teaching a group class about the waltz, it's like it should look effortless and it shouldn't feel effortless, but I don't really care about your feelings, okay? And they sort of laughed and people love it when I say that. It's true. Like, I don't really care about your feelings when you dance because... I was complimenting them saying that they'd improved so much over the time we've been working together. And they may not believe that when I say that because it might feel terrible. I said, your feelings don't actually matter because it looked correct. It moved correctly. It was on time. And the feelings are what you have to deal with. All right. That's not my space. That's where you got to learn how to uh, create that feeling yourself. Anyway, so, but to get to that point of it feeling, you know, beautiful, balanced, uh, good feelings, right? All of it coming together in like a perfect harmony. That takes commitment and a lot of disease, right? Not disease like cancer, but disease, uncomfortableness, like constantly. It's very, very difficult to maintain the same level without pushing yourself beyond what's comfortable each day. Like you got to push the boundaries, right? Very important. If you don't do that, you're not going to explore the new sort of area that you're unfamiliar with. And that's the space of growth. All right. So if you do what's comfortable, you're in a space of safety and certainty, but you're also not expanding yourself and growing. And because of that, that's where you find um, the monotony of training, the monotony of the same thing. Because it's exciting when you first begin something, right? A new relationship or a new dance partnership or a new level that you're about to move toward, or a new job, okay. And then the honeymoon phase wears off and you get accustomed to it and you could, or your new level of income, this happens to as well, right? So you get used to a certain lifestyle then and then it just becomes the same. And so what is the key then for that to, I suppose, uh, be separated? By the way, guys, leave, leave your comments and uh, questions in the window while I'm here because I would like to uh, answer more questions while we're here. So I'll just put this up there. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, there's a link below if you want that. Okay, cool. I'll get back onto this in a sec. Oh, cool. Right. Yeah, so, and this is what I noticed with uh, running a, a dance business online and offline is that you get people that come in and the honeymoon phase kicks in very early within a month it fades out for some within a year for others because then the the realness of getting better hits them and this is where most people quit and that's sort of the bottom of the pyramid and so the next level is of course thinner right and as you go up it gets smaller and smaller and that's exactly what happens within the sort of the rungs of 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 learning any skill uh, and that could be the same for me if i went in to learn how to paint and i really enjoyed the classes i may not commit to like more classes i might do a few of them but then if I really wanted to get better, I know that it's going to take more time, more effort, more patience, more guidance. And so there has to be something within you that resonates. And I think for a lot of people, uh, it, it, there's a, okay, I struggle with, with this in, 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 the, in, the, in the artistic space in a way, because it's very masculine to have goals and then it's very feminine to be artist. So artistic. So uh, in a way, the expression of it. So it, it gets complicated because it's very difficult to be an artist and have goals in a, in a way. Like it's a bit conflicting as an idea because uh, goals are sort of outcome driven, yeah? 
and you don't really reach like levels are made up in dancing in a way yeah but we can quantify it based on skill so you can like measure those right you can measure a skill of someone dancing and through medals and through competition you can do that to an extent but does that then relate to you being like really deeply satisfied with enjoying your dancing because i know for a lot of people even if they get past those like early stages they're really deep into it they're a few years into their practice they love it they're moving ahead it can actually burn, go backwards and that happened to me so on a, on a personal side I, I had several moments where i was just like i hated training like i hated dancing and i'm very optimistic you know i'm very passionate about things when i get into them and that can be good and bad yeah and so but it's not enough to sustain you and so i'd often find that oh man like even having a good skill set even knowing where you're going and having those goals to move toward weren't enough sometimes and so you've got you've got to realize that be, beyond just turning up each day and having stretch goals and that sort of thing there has to be something in you that really desires what you're doing um, and you don't have to know why so sometimes you need to know why other times just like do it because you love it i think that's a really nice thing to follow uh, and, and then you can get in the game of getting caught up okay so if you are always going for something and you know why you want it it can lose its luster right um because you've sort of lost the discovery element <clears throat> because half of the fun of going into new friendships vacations new situation you haven't been in new relationships new people uh, exploring new business opportunities and new careers half of the fun is trying to discover is this what i want to do is this the right person are these the right people right and you don't know that until you actually go through it and that's what i encourage you to do like really push yourself to do things that you're not good at doing particularly as you get older and you get really comfortable and set in your ways god damn it you got to push that comfort zone and that brings me back to the, the thing of ease ease is really destructive in a lot of ways so it's great in one way but in another way it's actually quite has the opposite effect because it's where when when we're uncomfortable we find sort of our true self in a way and what we're really made of and that's very confronting for a lot of people i understand um now by the way if anyone's got a question on dancing or on anything i'm talking about leave it and uh you can even come in on a video if you'd like to just uh, click that link that'd be cool but if not that's okay sometimes these things hit at the wrong time all the algorithms are a bit weird so same here on youtube and facebook you guys rock actually if you're on facebook come over to youtube that's a good way to do it <clears throat> okay so for those who are brand new to dance i do encourage you to just keep pushing like keep turning up keep exploring and don't often rush to make a decision as well you don't need to know the exact outcome you're pursuing all right you that that that's hobby level things are hobbies right they're not necessarily massively outcome driven so you don't have to have a this is going to be my career this is my 10 year plan this is where i'm going that happens when you're moving out of the hobby space into um uh, into a different territory right so uh for those people you know i've got online courses and programs that are well worth exploring that i've created i think close to a thousand tutorials technique videos mindset videos on how to actually move the needle like that for yourself but a lot of hobby dancers don't need that they just need to know i love doing this and i'm going to give myself permission to do it and hell yeah i'm going to go and do that and it doesn't have to become the best in the world and i don't have to i don't have to uh you know turn this into a career one of the craziest things that i always laugh about all right think about the the oxymoron of this arts career like that's weird yeah like monet did not pursue a career in art yeah neither did mozart and i mean like he was pushed by his father for sure to to do the work and his dad grinded him around europe to you know he learned from the best of course and mozart was a prodigy in a way so you know you can't compare yourself to that but the idea of art and career is very weird right because again there's no real pathway so half of the fun is to put yourself in those positions that you really are uncomfortable in see if it's for you and then to follow your intuition like if you this is i'm going to leave you on this one right if no one else has got a question for me and i think this is really cool for you all, you all to hear because this is something that um you know well particularly for the men because people often think intuition is just like for women 
Um, intuition is female, male. It's non-binary. No, it's there's no gender. Intuition is a human thing that we can tap into and we all possess. You should follow your intuition, right? The gut feel, what lo- lies between, I would say, what connects the conscious and the unconscious, right? There is a, a sort of humming middle. And in that, you often know what to do. Your conscious mind, where your rationale is and where you have logic and your reasoning faculties, and of course, your intellect and your willpower, your perception, your memory, all those faculties there are not your intuition, right? Your intuition is something you have and you connect into. And you can often uh, misguide yourself because you overthink and overanalyze. Very easy to do. And so you, you should follow your feelings. So if you're enjoying something, if you're like, oh, I'm terrified to do this because insert the fear, insert the, the, the problem you think will happen, which is completely imagined, by the way. It doesn't exist. It exists in your brain. It does not exist in the real world. But that fear becomes real to you, so it's relevant. Well, that thing there, right, is not necessarily what you should pay attention to. It's important, but you shouldn't pay attention to it as a way to make a decision. You should follow your gut feeling. So if you're getting the feeling that I should look at dancing a medal exam or going on the competition floor or uh, finding a dance partner and doing something seriously about my dancing or, you know, moving interstate or traveling overseas or going to that competition. Those things, you should definitely be going more by your gut feeling and your intuition than the logical reasons why or why not you should do the thing. Because in, in essence, anyway, we do this, whether you know it or not, we make decisions emotionally and we justify them logically. We do this with everything, right? Why did you buy that car? Oh, it was a good deal. It was a good price. It was um, <clears throat> my favorite color, you know? Well, that's all logic, isn't it? You bought it because emotionally it makes you feel a certain way. Um, and so, and then you justify it with logic. So we do this all the time. Now, keep that in, in, in the forefront of your mind the next time you get challenged on something in your, in your own life personally. It's like, is this the right thing to do? And then go deep in, go deep within because that's where the fun is going to be. That's where you're going to have a lot of fun. That's where you're going to also find risk, my friends. And risk is, well, what do you think of risk? Let me ask you. Welcome, Nigel. How are you? Thank you for being here. And hello, Louise. Yes. Oh, hell yeah. I'll help you out with this. Let me talk about risk real quick. Um, Let's just smash a strawberry and someone else asked a question too. Mm, That's good. So, well, you can't avoid risk, right? And that's one of the misnomers that I think the school system helps people try to mitigate um, through like report cards and whatnot. But essentially you cannot avoid risk. You only decide which risks to take. And that's where the fun is. So don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. If you get that vibe, if you get that feeling that this is something I should do, I'm not sure where this is going, but it seems like fun then go for it. You only live once, right? You only have limited opportunities. A lot of things don't come around again. I mean, look, on the one side, there's what's the saying from Richard Branson, you know, opportunities like buses, there's always another one, but not the same ones twice because we're never in the same point in time ever. So if you just imagine time as a continuum, right? Linear, you, you know, you are continuously moving. So you're never in the same place at the same time with everything lining up around you, you know, no two events are the same. So because of that, you don't get the same opportunities twice and you may not get it with the same person. So you should always play ball with that. And I encourage that with my students when they do pro-am. It's like, you, you don't know. My, my legs may not stop, my, will not work next year. Let's go overseas. Um, use me until I drop. Louise, hi Vaughn. Any tips for an older competitor about to do their first teacher dance shooter competition? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Would you like to come on, on the show? You can just click that little video link above and I'm uh, happy to bring you in. I have a lot actually. Uh, first of all, congratulations to you. Let me play a cheesy sound effect. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Go Louise. That's actually really sick. Uh, yeah, so I think congratulations is actually like the first thing to say. Mm, okay. So I don't know, that's a pretty generic question, but it's a, it's a good question because a huge amount of people that do a competition are in the master's category and they often fall in the same uh, problem area. So the first things that's sort of coming to mind are 
because again, I don't know your coach, your coach's style, your teacher's style or anything like that. Uh, continuity practice. I would recommend that because one of the biggest problems with people who do competition is they get so in their head and about their nerves, about being right, that they don't train their body properly. The way you train your body properly is through continuity practice. Now, now continuity practice is, is sort of different to, uh, it's, it's different to practice in a way. So, I mean, <clears throat> I don't even like the word practice because fundamentally what's, your body doesn't know what's real and what's not. So you're always in a state of, of training, right? So if you want to do it the right way, I would say dedicate a large portion of your competition training and your, your rehearsals to putting on a song and then trying to dance the full song without stopping, even if you make a mistake. It sounds very straightforward, but <clears throat> please excuse me, hold on. It sounds pretty straightforward, but you'd be amazed, and you probably found this problem yourself, Louise, is that you start dancing and you stop as soon as the first thing goes wrong. And now you've just trained yourself to continue stopping when things go wrong. So you actually have to and it, it, get to a place where you can continually dance your routine until you want to stop and you're still on time and you're still doing your choreography. Or if you change your choreography, you can get back onto your routine, right? So continuity practice is actually a very important skill. It's very difficult to do, but it works, um, <clears throat> it works extremely well but again, you've got to discipline yourself to do it. You have to use that willpower because you're going to want to stop, especially when you start getting tired. When you get tired, you fatigue, you make more mistakes. And again, you start to reinforce the looping pattern of stopping when you make mistakes. And that's a very bad thing. Now, the other thing is too, sometimes it's good, and, and I wouldn't necessarily do this for what you're doing, but it's for anyone who's listening. Sometimes it's good to start your routines in different parts of your routine and then continue. So for example, how many more times do you start the beginning of a routine than the end? Well, you know, you've always done the beginning, but you've probably done the back of your routine, say the last eight bars, substantially less. So it's worthwhile trying to equal that out. Again, that not necessarily for competition, that's just for just good practicing, um, generally speaking. So continuity. Now, here's a couple, of things, so a couple of things I will bring for you if anyone else has got a question for me while I'm here. Join Boring Mastery Academy. Okay, so Boring Mastery Academy is an online program it's for six weeks that I run a couple of times a year that will absolutely transform your dancing and the way you think about dancing. It's got a lot of frameworks. The last module in there is, uh, well, there's a hundred lessons in it, yeah? The last lesson category is going from the studio to the stage. And it's everything in between. So it's like, okay, what do you actually do 30 days out from a championship or a competition? What do you do two weeks out? What do you do a week out? What do you do 24 hours out? What do you do the day after? Which a lot of people don't talk about. And that's based on my own like 20 years of competition experience and also being competitor and athlete and mindset performance coach, certified coach, like studying excellence, like understanding what, what works, what doesn't, recovery, mindset, all that stuff. And so in, in very short form, don't, practice exactly the same way um, each time. So, okay, so you're going into a competition. Let's say it's Sunday in three weeks from now. Most people don't train hard until the week of the competition, all right? Um, or they're still trying to fix errors two or three weeks out from a competition. What you're doing now, if you're doing a competition in three weeks, is basically how you're gonna be on the day. So you can't do a lot of technique training. So you have to focus on continuity. All right. You also need to do rehearsal practice, which is different to continuity. All right. So con rehearsal practice would be like put on your outfit or put on like your attire so you at least feel like you're doing competition. Uh, and then you would practice walking on the floor, do your dance, exit your dance. So you dance for two minutes, for example, exit your dance then position yourself for the next one, then the next one, the next one, then exit the floor. And you actually run the rehearsal as if it's a competition. Now, because of your continuity practice, you should not have been stopping during these because now you've got the skill, you see? And so because of that, you start to increase your confidence for the day because you're putting yourself in a, in a mind space of performing in a rehearsal practice because you're not doing it just to get through it like continuity. 
where you don't care how you look. You're just trying to dance continuously, right? For like a whole song. Does that make sense? Uh, you can take it to another extreme when you do like stamina practice, which is basically like you dress in your attire full song and you do all the rounds, right? So there's, just knowing those three things can really help you separate in your in your mind um, how to approach things because it very you have to put yourself in the mind space of doing it. So, and again, it's not always necessary if this is just a fun casual competition, but it really helps to have that um, mindset to, to going into a practice session and not just giving yourself an out, you know, and taking it easy today and all that sort of shit. Don't, don't take it easy. Go hard. Go really fucking hard when you dance. Obviously, if you're doing a waltz, do not try to crush the waltz, right? Like dance it beautifully. But by going hard, I mean, when you feel like stopping, you continue. When you are out of breath, you take a deep breath and you go for another minute, all right? And you dig deep and you find the way to keep going. And by doing that, you're going to find the next time you dance, it's going to be easier and easier, you know? And so that's the whole point. All right. So you've got those sort of three ways to, uh, to approach your practicing and approach your sort of skill development in that sense. All right. Does anyone else have a cool question for me? I would like to, uh, before I get going. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Thanks, Nicole. What's up? Hey, Nicole. Continuity practice. When you say dance when... When you say dance, when you stop, does that mean when you finish your full routine? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. Um, you, there's a few. You can structure it however you want. The word continuity should be the thing that you care about. Um, <clears throat> oh, that's cool, Louise. Um, yeah, interesting, different approach. Yeah, yeah, I've got a lot of different and interesting approaches. So ask me questions on like anything in dance related. I'll, I'll help you. Okay, so coming back to this. Um, <clears throat> so let's just say one way of doing continuity practice. I'd go into the studio. I would press rumba, bang, that song would play. I would just continually dance my routine until the song finishes. So continuity, I would not stop when I finish my routine once. I would keep going till the song ends. All right. Same with like the samba. I would play that, do my whole routine because the routine should loop. And then I would continue that. That's continuity. If I made a mistake... I would keep going. Or if I made a mistake and I stopped because I was like undisciplined and I went, ah, oh, and I just got caught off guard, I would just hit back and start again. And Nicole, you will see how unfit you are doing this, <laughs> especially if you have 10 dances. You will die doing this, okay? Because to get through 10 dances, if each song's two to three minutes, you're talking 20 to 30 minutes of straight dancing if you don't make a mistake. Because part of what you have to do in your mind is like, I, I, well, you don't say I won't dance. <laughs> okay, so let me let me share another thing that I used to do that worked extremely well. Uh, if you say to yourself, "I will not make a mistake," you're going to make a mistake. So I would often say, "I execute my routine flawlessly." Now I knew I was a little lying to myself, but you know the word lies in belief. So if you say a lie often enough, you'll believe it, right? So I'd be like, "I will dance my routine flawlessly." I did not dance at full. It was always going to be littered with mistakes, but that didn't matter. I wasn't saying to myself, I will make mistakes, right? And so that that sort of slight change in, in, in mindset, vocabulary, focus really helps inspire you. Um, and so as you're trying to do your four routines, Nicole, you'll find, okay, four minutes by three is still 12 minutes of dancing. And, but you've got to be disciplined. If you make a mistake, you repeat and start again. And then you continue all the way through and you're trying not to reinforce the way that mistake is by stopping because often that will happen with people. They get to a point where a very difficult piece of choreography is <clears throat> and then they they get to a point of like, oh, I can't just, I can't break through that. Now, even if you're off time, you should keep going and try to get feedback on your timing. So you can also video yourself, which is a good thing to do. Grab yourself like a little tripod, put your phone up on that and then record yourself as you're doing these continuity practices and you, you're going to decline, like as you get it at past two minutes, your quality is going to drastically diminish. But uh, yeah, so it's not it's not complicated, right? It's very straightforward. But it will certainly uh, it will certainly help smash you. And again, you're going to realize very quickly how unfit you are, and that's okay, right? Um, and that's exactly why you do it. Okay, so listen, this has been great. Let me know if anyone else uh, has a question for a minute while I smash another strawberry. And it's a lot of fun seeing you all. Let's see here. 
Also, I'll put a link in the window if anyone wants some more. Um, if anyone wants to RSVP for the next Boring Mastery Academy coming up, just go here and uh, do, 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 put your name on the waiting list. Boop, boop, boom. Boring Mastery TV, baby. Okay. There's a bit of a lag too, so I'll just let this hang out for a second. <laughs> Cool. It's nice to be back online. <laughs> okay. All right. I might kill this feed in a second. Oh, Beatrice, you're never late. No, actually, you probably are. I don't know. Are you an on time person? <laughs> Nicole, what's up, Nicole? Oh, do you, Nicole, I actually live in Australia. <gasps> do I not sound Australian? I always get that. I have I have a global accent. I, I go to America, people think I'm American. I come to Australia, people think I'm American. I'm like, what was happening? Yeah. No, I, I live I live in Australia. I do travel a bit, but um, you can shoot me a message and let me know where you are. And if I'm traveling that way, we can arrange some lessons. It's no problem. Uh, but at the same token too, I do live workshops once a month online with my members in my board mastery access community. So feel free to join that. If you'd like some proper help, you can send me videos and I'll give you feedback on them and uh, give you a huge amount of technical library access and point you in the right direction. So feel free to check that out. Okay. Some good chats here. Thank you so much, everyone. All right. So cool. We're getting close. We're closing comments. Let's have a look here. Boom, 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 boom. All right, legends. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> let me play some music. Let this thing. y'all thank you appreciate your time thank you everyone for uh contributing being here and check out boringmastery.tv huge amount of resources on the youtube channel if you want to support the channel support the creation of the content everything i do uh, feel free to become a member it's like four dollars 99 a month so yeah thanks for buying me a coffee um that'd be awesome okay so good luck louise good luck nicole y'all are awesome appreciate you being here it's been great and i'll see you on the next one